Hello and welcome back to Treehouse Museum. I'm here once again in our Walk in the Woods exhibit. Some time ago, we made a video about how Rabbit got his long ears with stories from India and from Ghana, West Africa. In India, we found out that the rabbit got his long ears as a reward after saving all of the other animals from a ferocious lion. In Ghana, West Africa, Rabbit had always had long ears, but so had all of the other animals until Rabbit found a way to be the only one with long ears. If you get a chance, check out that video. We'll put a link in the description below. But around the world, they tell that story in so many different ways. And today we're going to North America, where they tell that story a little bit differently, especially among the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet peoples of Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in Canada. And would you believe it? All of the stories are completely true. Now that's true, completely true, the stories I will tell to you, the way it happens through and through, for me is to tell it's true. Once, in the old time of the far north, when all of the animals were first animals and all of the people were first people, there lived rabbit. Not some rabbits, not a rabbit, but rabbit, the only one. Not that you'd know it to look at him. His ears were short where they should be long, and on the outside, Rabbit was all wrong. But inside, he was still that same tricky scalawag. The first tricky scalawag, in fact. For just as there was only one deer, and one bear, and one raccoon, and one tortoise, one river, and one mountain, there was only one rabbit. And he was bored, so bored. So bored that he decided he would play a harmless little trick on all of the other animals. At first, he splashed his face with water, and then he found a place along the trail where the other animals were likely to come along. And he sat down and loudly began to cry. <laughs> sure enough, down the trail came Raccoon. Rabbit, is that you? asked Raccoon. <laughs> oh, Raccoon, uh, surely you've heard the horrible news. No, what is it? Uh, well, it's horrible. Uh, wait, you, you don't know? To think you'd have to hear it from me. Uh, I thought you knew everything. I was just thinking to myself, if there's anybody who knows all about this already, it's Raccoon. But you don't know anything at all. Well, what is it? Well, when the sun goes down this evening, it is never, ever coming back up again. Wait, what? Yes, it's true. When the sun goes down, it will never, ever be rising into the sky to warm us ever again. But it will be so cold. Freezing. And dark. Darker than dark. And all of the food will... That's right. It will all stop growing. It's going to be like a long winter's night. Forever. Oh no. That is horrible news. What are we going to do? What can we do? It's all over. I only hope that the other animals aren't out there just hogging all of the food. You know how the other animals are. They're probably just running around, gathering up all the remaining food for themselves. Listen, if you've got other forest friends out there, you'd better warn them to get gathering food for themselves before there isn't any left at all. Right. Right. Well, best of luck, Rabbit. Chin up. I better go tell Tortoise. <laughs> oh, how Rabbit laughed behind his paws as Raccoon raced away. And soon Raccoon told Tortoise, and Tortoise told Deer, and Deer told Bear, and so on and so on, until all of the animals, large and small, were racing this way and that, gathering food and stuffing their faces in preparation for the long, dark night they thought was coming. Meanwhile, Rabbit just hid and watched and laughed. <laughs> And laughed! Hoo, 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 and laughed! Ha, ha, ha! And it was on this day that Glooskap came to visit. Now, in this part of the world, they tell stories of a great hero and teacher named Glooskap. Glooskap was a man, but more than a man. They say he was there before the wind knew how to blow, and 
and, and before the land knew how to stand. They say that he had a hand in designing all of the animals that were. So whenever Glooskap came to visit the land, all of the animals that lived there were very eager to run up to him and talk to him. But on this day as Glooskap came, none of the animals came to greet him as they usually did. They were all far too busy. Glooskap saw Bear shambling along and eating berries as he went. Om, om, om. Hello, Bear, said Glooskap. But Bear didn't answer. He just kept stuffing his face with berries, walking on by. Om, om, om. And Glooskap saw Tortoise moving along slowly like Tortoise always did, eating grasses. But he was moving faster than Tortoise had ever moved before. Hello, Tortoise. But Tortoise just grunted and moved on by. Deer came bounding through without even a nod for Glooskap. And Glooskap saw a raccoon running this way and that way, gathering nuts and seeds and pizza. What would you gather for the last day of the world? But none of them would stop and talk to him. Finally, Glooskap went back to Bear and said, Now, Bear, you've got to tell me what's going on. Sorry, Glooskap, said Bear. No time to talk. I've got to eat all of the berries before the sun goes down. Glooskap asked, why whatever for? Because the sun's going down forever and I've got to eat all the berries and get my share before it becomes winter night forever and we don't have any of them left. Glooskap said, whoever's been telling you that has been telling lies. The sun isn't going down forever. We've got to fix this problem fast. So Glooskap called all of the animals together and asked, who has been spreading this lie? Bear, who told you all about it? Well, I heard it from Deer. And Deer, what about you? Uh, I heard it from Tortoise. And Tortoise, who told you the sun wouldn't be coming up tomorrow? Well, of course. I heard it from my friend, the raccoon. And raccoon, what about you? Well, I heard it from Rabbit first. Rabbit, who did you hear it from? Rabbit? But Rabbit hadn't come when Glooskap called. Instead, he was hiding in the bushes, shaking and giggling and trying to keep from laughing out loud at all of the trouble he had caused. Glooskap stalked over to the bushes and reached in, taking Rabbit by the ears. He tried to pull him out, but by now Rabbit was so frightened that he held on with all of his might. Glooskap had to call the other animals for help, and Bear pulled on Glooskap, while Deer pulled on Bear, Tortoise pulled on Deer, Raccoon pulled on Tortoise, and so on and so on. And as they pulled, the Rabbit's ears began to stretch and stretch and stretch until finally he popped out of the bushes and his ears have remained stretched and long like that ever since. So that's why Rabbit has long ears. And at least in Atlantic Canada, that's true. Now that's true, completely true, the story I just told to you. The way it happened, through and through, from ears to tail, it's true. Now that's true, completely true, a trickster legend stretched to tell, but only Rabbit knows it well. From ears to tail, it's true. And that's right, another completely true trickster tale about how Rabbit got his long ears. Completely true as much as any of the stories are completely true. If you don't believe me, why don't you give your own ears a stretch and see if it helps you hear the stories any better. I hope you'll check out the other video with those other stories about this and the art video that goes along with these story videos. The links are in the description below. And until we see you here at Treehouse again, bye. Treehouse Museum is in Ogden, Utah. 
And don't forget that you can visit Treehouse anytime online at treehousemuseum.org. <laughs>